Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And I'm going to offer up a Q&A about questions that have never been asked. Uh, so in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, who I am and why I do what I do here on the channel, some of the things you typically see going on behind me and what is that all about anyway and with this I want to say up front if you ever have questions like this you know something that isn't specifically a lesson in Freemasonry you just want to ask a general question about me or about the set as it were uh, feel free uh, I'm up for those questions as well so uh, first thing I like to touch on I've only ever had one comment about this uh, somebody made a comment about uh, they must they must have been just been binge watching the videos because they said okay we get it your name's Jared get on with it and that was obviously a, a direct comment to how I start every single video my name is Jared I'm a master mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America but why why the heck do I do that every single time well two reasons first off uh, the internet is a vast and wide place. I've got nearly 500,000 views on this channel and 5,000 subscribers. So about 90% of the viewers that come and see one of my videos, uh, they, they watch one video and they, and they move on. So uh, I don't know whether you've watched uh, one video or 100 on this channel. So I always want to introduce myself so that you know who the heck I am and what kind of claim I have to be any sort of an authority uh, to speak about Freemasonry. So the only authority I'm claiming is that I am a Master Mason. And I mentioned my name and where I'm from. Um, where I'm from is because the jurisdictions are different. So every jurisdiction has some level of difference, even with its neighboring jurisdictions. Uh, I've never personally seen one, but I've heard all the stories that if I were to go to Alabama or Louisiana or Tennessee and see a degree done, that it would seem very different to the way it's done here in Mississippi. So I mentioned that because if you're from a different jurisdiction, I want you to understand why it might be different. Oh, well, that guy's from Mississippi, so no wonder it's not the way I just got my degree and it wasn't done that way. That's why. But why do I mention my name? I've shown you on my plaques. My full name is Jared Francis Stanley. And I mention that because I read a book one time, or it may have been an article. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but this was something that said, uh, it, it was a book or article about people who bash Freemasonry, uh, people who always have things to say, and they, and they, you know, the more I think about it, and I'm not even going to edit this out, I think it came from the book called, Is It True What They Say About Freemasonry? So you'll have to look that up. Um, two eminent Freemasons wrote that, and I'm just going to let you, I want to tickle your brain so that you go over there and go look it up yourself. I don't want to give you all the information. Um, but in there he mentions about how usually people who have something to say about Freemasonry but they don't have any leg to stand on they use a pseudonym uh, sometimes it's simply a pen name like Leo Taxel or maybe it is a online name that makes no real sense and isn't even easy to pronounce however if somebody is willing to identify themselves then at least they feel like they're coming from a position where they can defend themselves and not just arbitrary uh, backbiting or arguing because they just don't like Freemasonry. So I mentioned my name because I want to try to establish that authority and that trust to say I'm not ashamed of who I am or what organization I belong to and I'm willing to tell you my name so that you can refute me and cite me and we can have a discourse. So that is why every single video starts with that opening phrase. Uh, now then, uh, many people already know this that are viewers of the of the channel, but you see if I can point the right way these uh, the, this colorful spheres behind me. So that, that thing there is called a playable art ball uh, or playable art spheres. I forget. There'll be a link down below if you're interested. Uh, it originally was something I bought as a fiddle toy for my wife when she was able to work from home and uh, she was working in our office and uh, she was doing, you know, um, uh, what's the right word for that? She was, oh goodness, there's a word for that. 
This is the stuff that normally gets edited out when I can't remember something right off the top of my head. Um, telemarketer is not the right term, like customer service agent, I guess. But anyway, point is, she wanted something to fiddle with in her hands, and I and I bought that. And when I first started doing these videos, I had it in the background. People started asking about it, and I would change the shape it was in. And it's all for fun. Sometimes it's in just a random thing. And sometimes I take an effort to make it look like a level or like a square or like a plum or I shape it like a like a triangle or like a sphere or other kinds of symbols that you might actually associate with Freemasonry. So uh, that is what that's all about. That's just a fun little thing. And it really, uh, sometimes it gets annoying because sometimes I'll sit down to record a video and I'll hit stop and then I'll hit record again and I'll get into my second video and two thirds of the way through it I realized I never changed the art and so <laughs> sometimes in anal retentiveness I'll totally wipe that video change that and start from scratch because I've wanted it to be different in just about every video but I'm, I'm really running out of you know concepts on what to do with that thing uh, something else that you may have noticed I almost always have a light on uh, whether it's an actual flame candle or an LED light like this one and really that's just a tip of the hat to light or enlightenment in Freemasonry. I, I like the idea of having that symbol be a part of it. I introduced to you a few videos ago the print over here entitled Music by uh, Juan Sepulveda uh, and uh, his artwork. I have a couple other of his uh, pieces as well uh, and that one just fits real nicely because I keep this pretty tight up. My camera's about two feet away from my face and I can't really condense this much more but the further I push away the camera the worse it looks so I can't fit all the different artwork that I have from Juan or anybody else in the video at one time uh, let's see here we've also got uh, this is when I was selected I showed you that in a video as well I was selected by the Grand Master to be Worshipful Master of the Year that is a recognition that is uh, specific to the state of Mississippi there may be other ones that are similar to it in other jurisdictions but the way it simply works is the ma the Grand Master sends out a letter toward the end of the calendar year and says to the lodges hey if you've got a master of your lodge or any master mason that you want to submit a name for to either be the worshipful master of the year or a master mason of the year then here's the form fill it out well my lodge filled it out for me to be recognized as the worshipful master of the year uh, the grand master gets those and sorts through them and makes a determination and when it was all said and done uh, the Grand Master gave me that. So I'm pretty pretty uh, proud of that recognition, for lack of a more humble word. And so it, it stays in the videos there. Uh, back behind me, you can kind of see a, a trestle board. That was something that my lodge made up for me. Uh, when I came out of the East the first time, I think the first time, uh, and so I was appreciative that they did that, and it basically is a certificate recognizing me as being the uh, master of the lodge for that year. Uh, you also see back here, I've had some questions about this. That is my Scottish Rite patent. So here in the southern jurisdiction of the United States of America, that is my patent for being a 32nd degree Scottish Rite Mason. Uh, I've also got back here, you always see it in the videos, uh, up a little bit, that is a poem called What is a Mason? And interestingly, I didn't even know the poem existed until after I had this channel, in fact quite some time after I had this channel, uh, and I ran across that poem and uh, my wife found a print online that she was able to uh, to to print none of them they're, they're all old reproductions of the same thing and she found this and printed it out for me and I just keep it tacked up on the wall. I see down here we have a, a little wooden chest that has a picture of the tree of life on the front of it. The tree of life is a symbol that I personally enjoy. I've enjoyed it since I was a little kid and uh, my wife got me that for my birthday or Father's Day uh, earlier this year. I can't remember uh, but that was a present from my wife uh, and I just love the tree of life so that that sits there. And then uh, over here is a plasma ball uh, that has a, a it's attached to a dragon statue. And again, I love plasma balls. So does my wife. We th we just think they're cool. And my wife is really big into dragons, and so we got this combination thing with the uh, plasma ball 
and the dragon and rather than move it out of the video every single time it just stays on the desk it has pretty much nothing to do with freemasonry except it it can be a really cool lesson about science and how various things work so but it's not really a freemason lesson per se uh, and then uh, uh, there's several other things on the desk uh, about you know I mean heck there's there's binoculars and behind it is a window you can figure that out uh, love looking at uh, my dad's an avid bird watcher uh, and I like you know peeking out and checking out the birds there's actually a big grape arbor outside the window there and so it can be really cool where you know a cardinal flies up and we get a real pretty view of it uh, up over here is uh, part of my library of Freemason texts and up above if you've ever gone to the actual channel page um, youtube.com slash uh, what is a mason or youtube.com slash one freemason either one will get you there you'll notice over on the side there's a thing that says my other channels and one of them is j and j acres i've got another youtube channel that has nothing to do with freemasonry whatsoever it has to do with gardening and the animals we have here on the property and little diy projects and things like that and that is a portion of my library of things related to uh, that channel so uh, those are kind of my my go-to things I'm always grabbing from that big block of white right there are actually books out of the uh, and I'm not even gonna know how to pronounce it but go to the Grand College of Rights uh, this is a pretty cool uh, organization who uh, if I can try to summarize it and make a fair record they collect degrees they have no authority whatsoever to confer any of these degrees but whenever they can obtain records of degrees that were done in the past they uh, publish uh, these little um, periodicals about them and there's usually a section in the front of it they give some sort of um, basically a paper explaining who the person was that came up with the degree, what it was about, and so forth, and then usually the monitorial work is included in there as well. So if you like learning about the evolution of Freemasonry and what's changed over time and between jurisdictions, then uh, I would recommend the Grand College of Rights to you. So uh, that's basically everything related to this. Now what about me personally? Well, already told you my name my wife's name is Jennifer we've been married for 15 years we have five children ranging from 14 years old to six years old so a uh, big family all of my children are homeschooled by my wife um, primarily uh, I give them what I can when I'm home from work and on the weekends uh, during the day I am working as the 911 director for Lauderdale County, Mississippi. You can go right on to lauderdalecounty.org, go to the departments, go to 911 and see my bright shiny face right there. So my job is to oversee and direct the operations of a multi-jurisdictional 911 department. Um, historically I've been involved in emergency services for about the last 15 years of my life. Um, in high school and right after high school I was more involved with the IT field I was working for a small local internet providing company uh, building and fixing computers and internet connections and all those kind of fun things but when 9-11 happened I decided to join the military um, and then that didn't pan out uh, my shoulder dislocated a couple times and they said thanks for showing up goodbye uh, and through a series of events it would take another half an hour to try to explain we ended up in Mississippi and rather than um, go back into the military and potentially be shipped overseas which was part of the big plan that I'm leaving out um, I found a job at the local Naval Air Station Naval Air Station Meridian Mississippi and I started working there as a gate guard and quickly worked my way into being an armorer and then a firearm instructor uh, where I actually certified all of the security and police forces on the Navy base on how to use their weapons I was a NRA certified uh, law enforcement instructor then uh, from there the emergency management department uh, 
to put it concisely, literally decided to steal me from security uh, and brought me over into emergency management where I worked as the deputy emergency manager for several years uh, and coordinated uh, Hurricanes Gustav and Ike and a bunch of other things. And then uh, when that contract was about to, to expire, uh, probably bears mentioning I worked for a company that had a contract with the Navy. I was not a federal employee. Uh, but as I learned that that was going to expire, I applied for a position here in Lauderdale County to become the 911 director and was ultimately selected for that. And I've been doing this job since 2008. Uh, so that's kind of the, the whole thing. And uh, I'm 35 years old. Um, I don't know what else more to tell you about me. So this is where the questions come in. I could sit here and babble all day, making my jaw go sore and boring you, or you could ask me pointed questions that I can give you succinct answers to down below. So if you made it this far through the video um, and you got any other questions you want to ask, feel free to drop them below. And I have no problem once a month or so interspersing a video that's a Q&A that's more personal rather than related to Freemasonry. So uh, I look forward to seeing what up with whatever you come up with. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch. Uh, if you've got other questions too, I, I mentioned about me personally, but you know about the, the set or why I do what I do or anything like that, uh, feel free to drop those below. And I appreciate that so many of our commenters take the time to uh, share information about themselves. It, it really warms my heart uh, when I see people post below about, you know, hey, Jared, thanks for the videos. It was nice hearing somebody with a level head talk about Freemasonry and not one of these crazy conspiracy things. Because of you, I felt comfortable enough to go and talk to my local lodge, and I'm turning in a petition this week. When I started this video, I never really thought that that would happen. Um, I, I pretty much expected to constantly be deleting comments and that this was going to be just something that made me feel good. Like I'm talking myself through learning Freemasonry because I learn something and have another thought about something every time I make a video. Uh, and I was very grateful to see that while there are trolls that come on and eventually get deleted off the channel, more often than not it's uh, comments from people around the United States, from people in Europe, from people in South America, from people everywhere around the globe that say, you know, hey, thanks for these videos. And, and that really is something that is just striking to me. I don't even know what a good word for it is. In fact, here's one last tidbit of information about me for you. I have never signed a petition for somebody to join Freemasonry because nobody's ever asked me. I've served on numerous investigative investigation committees and signed as a committee member uh, but here in the state of Mississippi you have to have two signatures from Master Masons to even recommend your petition to be considered by the Lodge and of those first two signers I have never signed a petition um, so it's really I, it's probably a bad use of this word, but it's 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 awesome. It, it's awe-inspiring to think about how technology has made it where you may not have to know me or another Master Mason personally. You can watch myself or listen to these other podcasts and other YouTubers, read these other blogs, and be inspired enough to say, hey, this is something I feel comfortable pursuing. I want to know more and and take that and put it back into the real world and go and physically ask somebody how do I join and how do I become a Mason and being any part of that is very humbling and it's really interesting to think I always wondered to myself in 40 years when I'm retired and my wife and I are driving around the country in an RV checking out everything we wish we had done when we had five kids but couldn't figure out a good way to afford it who am I gonna run into who says you're that guy in those videos. I watched your video 40 years ago, and you're the reason I turned in a uh, an application or a petition. Um, and that is a very humbling thing that makes me realize that, that these videos need to be just right. And I know I can't make them perfect. Um, I'm just a guy winging it. 
Um, but that's why sometimes you won't see a video for a week or so because my life is just too busy and if I were to rush home and try to throw up the studio lights and turn on the camera and talk to you I don't feel like I would do a good job so I say you know what forget it no videos this week I'll wait until there's a time where I can give it proper attention and make a video that I feel good about putting out so if I have had some effect on you um, then I'm very appreciative that you've taken the time to to share that with me I've received emails comments on the YouTube channel, comments on the Facebook, uh, private messages on Facebook, all these different sources where people take the time to say, hey, I just want to let you know I appreciate your videos. And that, to me, speaks highly to you and, and your character as a person because too often people are willing to complain about something uh, and and not willing or or... I don't know, they just don't go out of the way to make that positive comment. Uh, you know, I tell you like this, I, I I go to restaurants, I eat out, and sometimes I'll get something that just wasn't, you know, the way I wanted it to be, but I'm more of the kind of person where if I have a complaint, I'll show it by just not showing up at that restaurant another time. I'll go somewhere else. Uh, very rarely has somebody done something to a point where I've wanted to call it to a manager's attention and say, hey, look, you need to know this is going on. But more often than not, I will go out of my way if somebody does anything good and I'll make sure that manager knows. And usually in those cases, that's when I'll actually ask the waitress or waiter to, and say, hey, can you get the manager for me? And uh, make sure you come back with them. Because I want to tell the manager in front of that person, hey, this person did a knockout job. And to me, that's what you guys are doing for me when you turn around and say, you know, I appreciate the videos. It had this sort of an effect on me. So I appreciate the accolades, uh, it really serves as an encouragement to find the time and make the time to sit down and do these videos. So um, I hope one day in all of our different travels, either you make your way to Mississippi or I make my way to wherever you are and we get to shake hands. Uh, whether we get to sit in a lodge or not, uh, I hope one day to get to meet so many of you. Thank you all for taking the time to watch. I know this was a lengthy uh, discussion, uh, but I hope that maybe uh, you found something interesting about it. Uh, and again, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. And if nothing else, I'll always type to you and respond, even if it uh, doesn't turn into its own video. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye.